Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on the All Heart channel. So for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and give you our Montessori and Waldorf inspired room tour. Um, and I am sitting outside in 115 degree weather. That's right, I did not stutter. It's about 115 degrees, but I needed to start off outside because our playroom is actually situated in our back house. So we completely remodeled that back house and now it is our children's playroom and homeschool and it is absolutely our favorite room. We spend hours and hours there and I just wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys. So um, if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and go. So this is the outside of our homeschool and we actually had to open up this wall to um, be able to fit in the double doors because it was just a very tiny door that was there beforehand. Um, so we've got these beautiful French doors and as you can see on the outside of the windows, we have the uh, Waldorf stars right outside. And I included a lot of like signs like this um, open sign and if you turn it around, it says closed, but there's a lot of signs and I'll point them out when we're inside. Um, but that really helps with, you know, language development. So let's go ahead and come on in. So let's just kind of give you a quick little glance here. back to our French doors. So like I pointed out outside, we do have our Waldorf stars on the window. Right here and right here, that big rainbow one is my favorite. And then we have our little weather gnomes. And then right here on the left side, as soon as you enter, we do have our little washstand. So I usually fill up um, the little basin there and then we'll pour water and then they'll um, They're able to wash their hands on their own. We also have tissues in case they need to blow their nose I have baby wipes and I usually keep diapers since you know, my daughter is still potty training um, But having a, a stand like this is perfect for them because then they're able to do those things on their own And then here's a little sign that says wash your hands and then over here on the left-hand side as well is our bathroom. So again, a little sign that says push. And let's go ahead inside. So we have our mirror here, sink, toilet, another little sign that says remember to flush. And that's that. It's the perfect size bathroom for the kiddos. Now let's move on to one of my favorite spots in the room. So I actually went ahead and built this table because I had such a hard time finding a table that would fit in that area that wouldn't take up too much space. So I actually went to Home Depot and purchased this long board and it was huge. So I had them cut them down and I added the trim and I added legs and it works out perfectly for them. So we have those magnetic boards where they're able to post up pictures and I also keep like crayons and markers in these little tubs. They've got their colored pencils. And I also created this magnetic board. Um, so it's perfect again for displaying pictures and a lot of their like magnetic tiles and numbers. So whenever we're working on math, uh, we go ahead and work on things on there. So I did wanna show you this quick game so I ordered this online and it took forever to get here, but these pieces are absolutely beautiful. So there are these little magnetic um, wooden pieces. Uh, you can configure them however you want and it's like the perfect problem solving game. So what you do is you take a little marble, you configure the pieces and he's got like 20 pieces, I believe. And then obviously the goal is to make sure that the marble drops all the way down. 
So he spends hours playing with this, configuring it in a whole bunch of different ways, making sure that that marble makes it all the way down. So moving along over towards this right side, I do have a bookshelf for them with some of their favorite books. And we do have a great seating area. It's like the comfiest beanbag lounge chair ever. I don't know how many times the kids have fallen asleep on there. So let's move on towards the center of the room on this big, beautiful circular rug. So we do have my daughter's Pickler Triangle. I got this for her when she turned one. And even now it is one of her favorite things. So as you can see on this side here, it's like um, rock climbing tiles, but if you turn it around, then it's just like a staircase. And they're also able to just kind of climb using the little bars. And then on this side, it's like a, a slide. So it's perfect for developing their motor skills. It really gets the energy out of them a lot of times. And sometimes my son will uh, put one of the little play silks over it and they'll pretend it's a tent and then they're climbing in and out of it or my son will pretend he's a carpenter and he'll pretend that he's you know fixing up the beams but it's such a fun toy and especially if you have toddlers that are climbing over everything I mean this is something that you want to get because it is very safe for them so moving on towards the side we have what I call our music area. So my son just started to take uh, piano lessons. And then in the bin down there, we have more instruments so my daughter can kind of follow along. But she loves pounding on that uh, piano just as much as my son. Um, and then over here towards the French doors, we do have like a seating area for them, an area where they're able to put their coats, jackets, and backpacks. But we always place our shoes down here when we come in so that we don't track any dirt or anything like that. Moving right along, so this area is what we call basically mommy's area. So anytime that I have work to do or if I'm looking over my son's worksheets or anything like that, then I'm here working. And as you can see down here, these two um, bins filled with like these oversized tile. These are the coolest blocks I have ever seen and I'll go ahead and include some pictures of my son using them but they are his absolute favorite and I have never seen anything like them before so if you guys want me to do a more in-depth review on those I will go ahead and do that because I think those would be such a great addition to your playroom so when we come in, we like to look at our emotional eggs and see how the kids are doing. So I always ask them, you know, how are you feeling today? And they'll usually point out to the happy one. Rarely is it mad, but you know, my daughter gets pretty grumpy sometimes. So that, you know, sometimes we're pulling out that egg. And this thing over here, we actually got that at like the Target dollar spot, but this thing works. Especially if I'm on a phone call and I set it over to one whisper, the kids will actually keep quiet. So parents, you need to invest in one of these. So moving along over to the left, this is where I keep all of my kids like crafting and coloring and anything that has to do with like painting um, and art. So I keep all the things that they're able to take without permission on the bottom area. So they've got like their paints, colored pencils, uh, some of their maps, some coloring books, construction paper, some of the longer uh, coloring paper. They'll, I'll, I will uh, insert for them when they want it. And then over here under the desk, I keep all of their paints, their chalk, glue. And this here is part of their Lego set. So whenever they're trying to build something on the tables, I'll go ahead and pull that out for them. So no room is complete without a costume corner at least in our house because my kids have loved to play dress up since the moment that they could walk so at the moment i have a lot of my son's costumes my daughter's costumes are inside the house but i mean my daughter will dress up in these as well but we have like an astronaut we have a, the witch hat down here we have the pirate hat we have a king hat construction worker and then costumes, we have vet, fireman, 
um, astronaut here, policeman, detective. That was one of his newer ones for my son's birthday when he turned five. So he's got that in the magnifying glass and a doctor here. And then all of the props are either down here on the shelf, in the bin down here, or in this larger bin that says general store. So as you can see, we have a lot of like his um, foam swords and some of the little the little props in there for them when they need it. As we walk along over towards this first shelf, so this is where I keep a lot of my son's toys and there's a lot more loose parts. So whenever my daughter's over here, I'm obviously a lot more vigilant. But starting off like in this number one bin, we have all of my son's uh, train tracks and trains. In the second bin, we have all of his blocks in this third bin, we have a lot of his math games. So like geometric shapes in this bin over here, and I'll go ahead and pull it out. Get my finger out of the camera. So like we have some of these letter blocks, which my daughter likes to play with. We have some color sorting muffins that we play with. We've got some more like plan toy blocks. And we have some of these uh, sorting toys that you have to pull the string uh, through. So that's really good for like hand-eye uh, coordination. So these are perfect little games to keep around for your kids, especially when they're developing their like motor skills and their hand skills and it's perfect for them. All right, so moving along. So we have some of my son's little wooden play ships, wooden um, little school bus and cars, airplanes. I do have a lot more puzzles for him, but these are the ones that he really likes playing with right now. And then we have a lot of his like vocabulary games down here. So I'll go ahead and pull some out. So these are like the number matching boards that we have. And my daughter is the one that is playing with these now. Um, and just numbers one through 10, because like I said, she's only two. And this was such a good help uh, when my son was first learning how to spell out words and just learning vocabulary. Um, now, you know, he's five years old, but he's been reading since he was four. And um, I'll go ahead and include what I use in order to get him to read because that will be a video in itself. But I swear to you, that made all the difference. So moving along over towards this left side, we do have a, a balance board here. And my son uses this for a whole bunch of different things. Not only, you know, for balancing and rocking and coordination, but he'll turn it around and it'll become a bridge or he'll be rolling his cards over it. I mean, there are so many uses for it. So let me move this over to the side. Now I situated this um, Ikea cabinet in the center. And the reason for that is because both of my kids play with the toys in here. So on this side, as I mentioned, are all of my son's toys. And then on that side are all of my daughter's toys. And then over towards the left, we have like our, our practical life toys. So this is right in the middle because this is perfect for both of them. So on these shelves, we keep all of our Holtz Tiger animal toys. And I have separated them according to um, where the animals live. So where we classify them. So over here in this first bin is like the Jurassic era. So we have all of our dinosaurs. On this one over here, we have all of our farm animals. This one over here, we have all of our woodland animals. And then over here, oh, I see our little gorilla fell down. We have all of our exotic animals. On the bottom shelf, we have some of my son's little, uh, that little train house. We have some of its shape sorters. So this was perfect for my son. Um, so my daughter likes to stack them now and she's finally gotten to stacking them according to the shapes. But like this one, this one's a little bit trickier. So she still doesn't know how to do that. And she's still figuring out how to sort them according to size. But that's 
the perfect game to have because once they learn one thing, then they move on to the next level of that game and then the third level. So there's always like a level of difficulty that they're working on and it always keeps challenging them in that way. So let's move on to like what we have on the top of the shelf. So we do have my son's little astronaut um, wooden, wooden toys on this side. So anytime that he dresses up as an astronaut, he's playing with those. He's really into anything that has to do with space or the solar system or anything like that. And then we have some of his, I believe this is like a little airport and um, he's got some of his little favorite figurines there from Daniel Tiger. Um, and then over here we have, I believe this is from Hoppy. Let me see. Oh no, it's Plant Toys. So that little cactus is like a balancing, uh, it's a balancing cactus. So it took my son a little while to figure out how to properly stack them in order for them not to fall. So it's perfect for problem solving in math games. So let's move on over here to what I have for my daughter. So we got this toy for her when she turned one as well. And she loves being able to pop that ball inside and just watch it roll all the way down. And she will keep at it for so long. Um, but it's such a beautifully constructed toy. Moving along, so again, like I mentioned on the other side, this is where we have all of our Holtz Tiger toys. We have some of my daughter's grim balls down here at the bottom. And in this basket, we have all of her Holtz Tiger horses. My daughter is really into horses right now. So we have some of so we have some of these, like the little knight with their corresponding horse, like this one. And then we have this one. I believe this is a Grimm's Grimm's horse and she loves wheeling this around. And then we have some of our princesses like her Snow White wooden doll, her maiden princess. I believe this is the princess and the frog and we do have the little frog. So we love playing with, these, uh, with this when we're uh, reading the book. And then of course we have her little unicorn. She is really into horses and unicorns right now. That is, I don't know if it's a face or what, so we've got um, uniform clothes, pajama, pajamas, blankets, toys. That is the thing. And then along with like her princess uh, wooden toy, she plays with that little princess castle. So this is my daughter's shelf. Um, and as you can see, I've got a lot of like the color sorting games. And then we've got the little drawer where you pop the ball in. And I'll go ahead and insert a picture of when she first started playing with this toy. So the purpose of this toy is obviously to pop the ball in. But you know, when, when she was first learning, she would leave this drawer open. So when she popped the ball, it would never roll down. And she'd get so frustrated until she finally learned that she had to close the door all the way and then there's the ball. So she was so proud of herself when she finally learned how to do that. So again, this is perfect for developing her little motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and just like these sorting ones, like we'll use it not just to sort uh, the different shapes, but also recognizing colors, um, being able to count them, and the same thing goes with this one. This is one of her favorite toys. And so, like I mentioned before, you know, a certain game having, you know, working towards different levels. So obviously this game, the purpose of this game is to fit the, uh, fit the little donuts through the slot. So she already knows how to do that. She also is learning all of the colors. So she just turned two. The only thing that she doesn't know is how to sort them according to size. So obviously it would be purple first and then pink and then so on and so forth until it get the pieces get smaller and smaller. So that's what we're working on right now. But this is such a great game. On the top, we have a lot of like loose parts and loose parts are so important 
I mean, she utilizes these in so many ways. We use them to make impressions like in clay. She uses them when she's cooking. She uses them to make designs, you know, on the carpet. Um, and just the texture of them is so appealing to kids. So it's a great sensory, um, sensory tool. The same thing goes with the different shape, you know, rocks. We'll use them to count. Uh, basically use them the same way that we do the little uh, shells. And on this side over here, we have some of her sorting shapes. So she is very good at making sure that the right shape is in the right slot. And if you know anything about uh, Montessori toys and how you're supposed to display everything, you do want to make sure that you are separating things um, according to like what parts are supposed to go in which and that keeps everything nice and organized it also keeps them focusing on just one thing at a time so anytime that my daughter is here she'll pull out the shelf she'll play with the toy and then when she's done we'll put it back on the shelf well I'm sorry we'll put it back on the tray and then we'll put it back on the shelf so it really keeps things organized and it really keeps their mind organized because Kids can't really work very well in a cluttered space. So on the top shelf here, we have like her little clock. And I mean, like I mentioned, my daughter is two, so she doesn't know how to tell time. But this is the perfect game to be able to sort the shapes in the cor corresponding, you know, holes. And it's also really good for color recognition, you know, pink with pink and number recognition. So we're working on those three things. And then once she gets those very well, then we'll go ahead and, mo and uh, move on to telling time. So we do have two of the uh, grim elements. We've got the fire and the water, and she loves playing with this. Um, and she'll play, um, she'll use both of these in uh, conjunction with a lot of the like Holtz Tiger toys. So I'll go ahead and insert pictures of them playing with those. But those are such cute toys and they really love to tell a story with all of these different pieces. And having all the Holtz Tiger animals, being able to classify them um, so that they know, you know, the farm animals live with the farm animals, woodland, woodland animals are found in the woods. So anytime that they bring all of them out, that's one of the games we play in order to put them back. Like where are they supposed to live? So they know the dinosaurs live here with the other dinosaurs. This is the farm animals, woodland animals, and the exotic animals. So over towards this left side, we have this beautiful arrangement of different butterflies and it's just so aesthetically, you know, pleasing and the colors, if you've noticed, um, it's just very inviting and warm. In the two bins below that, so in this smaller bin here, I have all of their geometric shapes. So I love these because not only are they, you know, durable and sturdy, but they're able to use them to stack, uh, to build whatever they want. Also for shape recognition, like, you know, this is a triangle, this is a square, this is a rectangle and so on and so forth. So what I love about these are not just the fact that they've got you know, like interesting things inside them. Like this one has the sand. This one just has the colored, um, colored plastic in there. And then like this one, this one has water and glitter. So if you have like one of those light tables, these are so awesome to keep in there. And see like this one has little beads. So again, perfect for sensory development, perfect for, you know, being able to build things and also being able to learn more about colors because like the ones that have the solid color, like let's say you put a blue one and then you put a yellow one in front of it, then it'll turn green. So then they're able to learn how all of the color, like the color wheel works. So again, multi-purpose, open-ended toys, perfect for learning. In the larger bin, we have all of her little play silks. And let me know in the comments below if you want to know how we use these because we use these so much. And I know 
if you're new to like Montessori and Waldorf toys and you're being introduced to these, you're like, okay, my kid likes to play with like video games and toys that make a whole bunch of noise. Like, what is my kid gonna do with this? But you would be surprised how much use you can get out of these. I'll insert some pictures to show you how we use some of those. Um, but if you want a more in-depth video, please, please uh, let me know in the comments below. So on this side, right inside, we have all of our colored and textured balls. So as you notice, it has all of these like colorful little ridges. So they're perfect for that sensory development. And my daughter loves being able to toss these around and they're just so soft and like squishy. The texture is just really, really interesting. So she loves being able to play with, with all of these little balls. So we just keep everything in that basket, the balls and the little silks. And you know, they're able to reach them whenever they want and they're able to put them away um, whenever they're done. So over here on this side, we have our Waldorf play stand. Now, if you are looking at purchasing a big gift for your child this Christmas or for birthday or for whatever occasion, yes, please go ahead and purchase this if it is in your budget. We use this every single day. Anytime that, you know, the cousins come over and play or, you know, my friend's kids come over and play, this is the first thing that they go to. Right now they have it set up as like a play kitchen. So my daughter has her kitchen in there and my son is always in there cooking up a storm. And like I mentioned before, this is like the practical life side. So we have like my daughter's stroller, we have their little Melissa and Doug cleaning supplies. We have my daughter's little um, doll bed that she rocks back and forth and we keep all of the dolls clothes up here. And as we make our way inside, so like over here, we've classified all of the different fruits in this bin, vegetables in this bin. We have her little toaster and glove. And then we have her little play kitchen and I can see that she's baking cookies in here. We have her little dishes, condiments. And then in this one here, we have all of the dairy products. And then in this one, we have all of our fish and meat. So it's the perfect toy in order to learn, learn about like currency, exchange, classification of fruits, vegetables, dairy. Um, sometimes this is a store, so that's why I mentioned currency because then, you know, we have to pay for whatever we buy in here. Um, and my son does charge you, so nothing on loan. Um, and if you notice up here on the top, we have a large play silk. Right now it's the rainbow one but we do have one that has like the night sky and my son will put that up whenever he pretends to be like an astronaut and he'll pretend that this Waldorf play stand is a rocket ship. So again, imagination is key and it is limitless. So moving right along in the center here is just another one of my, um, son and daughter's little desks. So a lot of times we'll paint on this one just because it's so much easier to clean. Or like I mentioned before with their little Lego set, we'll place the little Lego set up here and then they're able to build, they're able to color. So if my daughter wants to use this and just use the blocks, then she's over here. And then my son will go over here if he feels like coloring. That way they have their separate individual areas and you know, a lot of times it's nice for them to have their own space to work and that way it's not cluttered and they're not, you know, in each other's way. So again, just a quick tour of the back space. So we have our costumes back there, mommy's area, we have the music area where we come in, lay our shoes, drop down our things, double doors. We have our um, little washstand area, bathroom, and then our little seating area 
with our magnetic board and books and our little quiet corner. So that concludes our room tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's so important to try to create an environment that is warm, that is inviting, that is engaging, that is going to make your child want to come in and learn and be curious enough that they want to continue learning. So don't think that just because your space doesn't look like mine or you don't have the right tools, don't think that you can't do that or provide those things for your child. You don't have to have such a big space. So long as you do dedicate an area that is just for them, you know, that is really all that you need. Um, I believe the next video that I'm doing is how to start um, setting up your home or your playroom or your homeschool, um, how to set that up so that your son or daughter is able to you know, grow in that type of environment and learn in that type of environment. So please make sure you hit that notification bell so that you are notified of when that video comes out. So if you gained any information from this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell so that you are notified of any future videos. For the entire month of September, I will be including um, content all based on education. I know that a lot of parents are at home right now with their kids and they're trying to figure out where to start. So I do want to include a few more videos this month um, based on, you know, what I'm teaching my son, what I'm teaching my daughter. My daughter is two, my son is five, and I am homeschooling them. And I have been homeschooling them since, you know, they were born. Um, so please stay tuned for those videos. and I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that. Make sure that you guys are staying safe. Make sure if you're living in California um, with this heat wave that you're staying hydrated, wear deodorant if you're going outside, and um, I will go ahead and see you guys very, very soon. Like I said, posting um, videos two or three times a week and for the whole month of September, it will be educational based. Um, content. So I'll go ahead and see you guys soon. Thanks again. Bye.